Good morning, and welcome to worship on this Christmas morning. Today we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ in a manger in Bethlehem. He becomes for us the Savior of the world. This morning's a little different since we're not meeting in the church this morning, but rather meeting only by video so that all of us can spend time at home with family and friends. This being the last Sunday of the month, it's also the time we would normally have drive-in communion. But we're not doing that today, again, because it's Christmas. So we can have drive-in communion next Sunday at 4 o'clock on New Year's Day. Please join us for that then. Our service today is also a little different because I'm not preaching. Rather, Dr. Martin Luther, the founder of the Lutheran Church, is our guest preacher today. You'll hear more about that in just a minute. Let's begin our worship this morning by the singing of our opening hymn. Martin Luther was the man God used to spark the Protestant Reformation in the 1500s. As a young man, Luther had done his best to justify himself by his works, but he never found peace with God 
until the Lord touched his heart with Romans 1.17. The just shall live by his faith. Luther became a mighty preacher and writer, oftentimes very plain spoken. In fact, he said things that you all would probably throw me out of the pulpit for saying. Nonetheless, that's Luther. The following message was never preached in one setting by Martin Luther. Rather, it's a compilation of things that Luther taught from the different Christmas passages of Matthew and Luke. As you will see, he sometimes fills in the blanks in the accounts with his own opinions and his own imagination. I'll let you sift through the good and the bad here. But there are also some great applications that I hope you'll let God speak to your heart about through Martin Luther's Christmas sermon. The story begins with the angels, because when God needs to deliver a message, he sends his angels. For this message, God chose the angel Gabriel, now Gabriel was the commander-in-chief of all the hosts of heaven, and he had legions of angels at his command. I think Gabriel must have been surprised when God asked him to go as an errand boy to a simple maid in Nazareth. Her name was Mary. I think she was probably an orphan. Of course, we hear the legend that her father was Joachim and her mother Anna, and that they were wealthy, but there's not a word about that in the biblical account. I think she was probably an orphan girl of about 13 years old, and that she was entrusted to Joseph for custody. It was to this girl that the angel Gabriel brought a message. And what was Mary doing when the angel came to her? Usually, in the pictures, she is portrayed as reading, and that's wholesome, but I wouldn't be surprised if she was doing the chores. And the angel said to her, Dear Mary, you are more blessed than any woman that ever lived, or ever shall live, for you shall bear a child, and you shall call his name Jesus. And he shall sit upon the throne of his father David, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Mary was flesh and blood. She said, How can these things be? And Gabriel said, You've asked too big a one for me, Mary. I don't know. But the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and you will not know yourself how it has come to pass. And Mary believed. There are three wonders here. One, that God should become man. Another, that a virgin should bear a child. And the third, that Mary believed. And this is the greatest of the three.
Now at the same time, the angel disclosed to her that her cousin Elizabeth, in her old age, was with child and in her sixth month. We read in the Gospel of Luke that Mary at once arose and went over the hills with haste, that she might help her cousin. Notice that she went with haste, not like our women who, when they go to market, stop and chat all along the way. But the Virgin Mary went with haste, and she went over the hills. Now let no one in this congregation take this as a warrant for going hiking over the hills unchaperoned. The Virgin Mary was very special, and she had a special command, so she went over the hills with haste. Mary stayed with Elizabeth and helped her until Elizabeth's baby was born. That baby, of course, named John. He grew into a man, and we know him today as John the Baptist. Now Mary helped with Elizabeth's new baby. She made soup for Elizabeth, and she gave the baby his bath, and then after about three months, she went back to Nazareth. And then what did she do? She told nobody of her secret. She went back and scrubbed the floor, and scoured the pans, and washed the dishes, and milked the cow. And there were many lordly dames in Nazareth who looked down upon her. She was, after all, a poor townswoman among the lowliest. But if they had known the wonder that she carried, they would have fallen at her feet.
Now after Mary returned home, God put her to a severe trial. She was engaged to marry Joseph, and when he learned she was with child, he resolved to divorce her. You can imagine how disturbed Joseph must have been when he discovered Mary was with child. She had been gone for three months visiting Elizabeth. Joseph could hardly see it in a good light. If the same thing happened to you or me, what would we have thought? If Joseph had publicly accused Mary of adultery, under the letter of the law she would have been stoned. But he didn't want to hurt her, even though he considered her hopeless. He decided to divorce her quietly. And so this holy virgin, celebrated by all the prophets, was thought by her own husband to be a loose woman. Here she was, deserted by her husband, in danger of death and with child. But God is faithful. An angel came to Joseph and said, Fear not, there is no dishonor or disgrace. She is with child by the Holy Spirit. Now Joseph had nothing to rely on but the word of God, but he accepted it. A godless man would have said it was just a dream, but Joseph believed the word of God and took Mary as his wife. Expected by your neighbors to put her away Found with child before the day was a terrible disgrace Were you feeling confused, maybe betrayed, crying to the Lord But the real you came shining through as you followed God's word From Galilee to Bethlehem is no small sacrifice Through doubts and fears, did you know just what you were fighting for? You were the man by the woman that gave birth to our Lord Now a decree went out from Augustus Caesar that all the world should be taxed. It was census time, and this census required that every man go to his own village to be enrolled. That meant that Joseph had to go to Bethlehem. That's where he came from. He was a very poor man. He couldn't get work in Bethlehem, so he had gone up to Nazareth to get employment. And now he had to go back to be enrolled.
The pictures always show Mary riding on a donkey, but there's no donkey in the Gospels. She, who might have gone in a golden chariot with angels to attend her, went on foot and trudged her weight across the snow of the Galilean and Judean hills. And as they approached Bethlehem, Joseph was saying, Oh, it will be all right. Soon we'll be among relatives and we can borrow everything. A fine idea that was. Her time came as they were drawing near, and Joseph sought room for them in the inn. But there was no room in the inn. Of course there was. There was all the room in the inn, but nobody would give up a room. Shame on you, wretched Bethlehem. You should have been burned with brimstone. And don't let you people in this congregation think that you'd have done any better if you were there. I can just hear you say, Oh, we would have loved to take care of the baby Jesus. We would have washed his diapers. No, you wouldn't. If you'd been there, you wouldn't have done a bit better. And if you think you would, why don't you do it for your neighbor in your midst, who is Christ among you? Joseph did the best he could, but nobody came to give a hand. There the guests were in the inn who could have helped, but they were guzzling and carousing, unmindful of the wonder that was taking place in their midst. Mary and Joseph were obliged to take refuge in a stable, to share with the cattle, lodging, table, bedchamber, and bed, while many a wicked man sat in the hotels and was honored as lord. No one noticed or was conscious of what God was doing in that stable. He lets their inhabitants eat, drink, and be merry, but this comfort and treasure are hidden from them. Oh, what a dark night this was for Bethlehem, that was not conscious of that glorious light. See how God shows that he utterly disregards what the world is, has, or desires. And furthermore, that the world shows how little it knows or notices what God is, has, and does. And she brought forth her firstborn child and laid him in a manger. Think of it, women. She didn't even have a cradle to lay the baby in. She didn't have anything. No warm water, no cold water, no pan, no towels, no table. Nothing that our German women have at such a time. It's a wonder the little fellow didn't freeze to death. And then when he was before them, what did they do? The pictures always show them kneeling in adoration. We may be sure that they looked with wonder and with joy on this gift which God had given.
Now there were shepherds abiding in the fields by night, watching over their sheep. That's a mean job. Looking after sheep is a mean job at any time, and especially at night. But it's to the people who are doing their job that God comes. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. The whole hillside was ablaze with light. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. A multitude, all the angels in heaven. And there are more angels in heaven than there are blades of grass on earth. And they were all singing, singing, singing. I wonder why one of them didn't go and give Mary a hand. You'd think one of them could have taken her a feather bed or a pan of warm water. But there they were, all of them, singing. They were so happy they just had to break out of heaven and sing to somebody. They would have had a bigger celebration if God had let them. And then when they disappeared, the shepherds said, Let us go even unto Bethlehem. They believed. I wouldn't have believed. I would have said, This doesn't make any sense. For all the heavens to open up and the angels sing a cantata for a few shepherds on a hillside? Why, if a king were born, surely the angels would have gone to Jerusalem and sung to Caiaphas or King Herod. That they should do it for us out here, it doesn't make any sense. We must have been dreaming. I wouldn't have believed it. If I'd been God and wanted to save the world, I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have just called in the devil and twisted his nose and said, Let my people go. But God doesn't even send an angel to take the devil by the nose. No, he sends a little baby, as weak and helpless as an earthworm, lying in the feed box of a donkey. And that little baby crunches the devil's back and overcomes all the power of hell and sin and death. The shepherds went to Bethlehem, and when they found the baby, they knelt in adoration. Then they told the whole countryside round about them what had come to pass.
And then we read, And the shepherds returned. That certainly must be a mistake. It ought to be. And the shepherds shaved their heads and told their beads and went into a monastery. But no, it says they returned. And where to? To their calling, and to their sheep. And a very good thing for the sheep indeed. And that's the story of Christmas, at least as Dr. Luther told it. It begins with angels and it ends with shepherds. And yet, it's a story fit for a king. With wonder and thanksgiving for Christ's coming into the world, we pray for the church, the life of the earth, and the whole human family. The church in every land makes a joyful noise to herald your coming, O God. We give thanks for poets, musicians, and hymn writers who give voice to our praise, and for all who lead the church's worship. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. This day dawns with new hope for all living things, and from ocean depths to mountain peaks the earth rejoices. Inspire in us an urgent zeal to protect the planet and renew its resources. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bring heavenly peace to this world and an end to armed conflict. Raise up leaders in every nation who will honor human rights and establish equal justice for all people. Give courage to all who speak out against oppression and advocate for the powerless. 
God of grace, hear our prayer. prayer. Guard the lives of any in danger, especially those who work to protect others. Lead all who are in desperate circumstances to sanctuary, help, and safety. Grant rest to the weary and soothe those who are troubled. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Bless all who gather to worship on this holy day. Be present at our tables and celebrations and watch over those who travel. Sustain charities, outreach ministries, and food pantries that give generously to people in need. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In Christ we have beheld your glory, full of grace and truth. We give thanks for those in every generation who reflect the light of Christ. May their witness shine forth in our time. God of grace, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Pondering the mystery of eternal love made flesh in Christ Jesus, we commend all for whom we pray to the mercy of God. Amen. Amen. As we close our time together this day, I'm going to let Dr. Luther have the last word. It is a very precious word which we hear on the lips of the angels. To you is born the Savior. This birth, the angels would say, is not for us. We have no share in it, except that we are glad with you and for you, who are poor, depraved, and lost men and women. This child, the Son of God, is your Savior. You are to be helped from sin and death. Now it is in itself a great and glorious thing that God has become man. But this is far more, that he is to be our spiritual and eternal Savior. Whoever would rightly believe this could tell what true joy is. Yes, if his heart were full of this faith, he could, for great joy, not live long. For his heart could not bear the joy. To each of you, 
Have a very blessed and Merry Christmas.